Read along with me. What, what change? Oh, oh, it's oh, it's 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 about, it's hey, it's sorry, I don't think it's marked, but <clears> the <throat> heading it says road water harvesting defined. The proper techniques in designing and start a road water harvesting system have as much or more to do with re-establishing and rebalancing surface water flow within the watershed as much as it has to do with reducing road maintenance. This is the big deal behind draining roads. Okay. All right. Calculation of surface water moved back onto the watershed by using proper road water harvesting techniques can be calculated in the tens and hundreds of acre feet. What's an acre foot of water worth in, if you go buy it in New Mexico? Huh. Buying water lately? Your first born. Huh? Your first born. <laughs> Damn near. This amount of water is very significant to restoring proper functioning conditions in your watershed. Harvey designed and executed the system of harvesting rain, snow runoff, water runoff, roads, redistributes the surface flow back onto the downslope watershed. This redistributed surface flow promotes vigorous vegetation, creates small ephemeral water holes if you dig them out right, if you've got clay for wildlife and livestock, decreases erosion, Sediment flow into the main stem waterways within the watershed. This rebalancing of local micro watershed rehydrates the downslope side of the road, which has been dewatered by the road's diversion of natural surface flow. This rebalancing of surface flow creates the proper functioning conditions within the micro watersheds, thus reducing erosion, gully formation sediment load into the overall watershed system. This type of road water harvesting is especially useful where roads parallel or cross riparian areas or clear water stream systems and fisheries. Okay. We reintroduced the real grand cutthroat trout into Comanche Creek and the Coyote Doll by cleaning up the water in the creek. The biggest, the problem with the creek was too much sediment, which gave us temperature problems and spawning problems because it covered the gravel riffles. Where was most of that sediment when we did the watershed assessment, Bill Z, Dr. Z, Dr. I, where was most of the dirt coming from? The road. The roads. We drained those roads. We got on the forest service and we changed culverts around so we could dump them into areas where we could, you know, diffuse that water and spread that sediment out. It was the number one thing. Other than a big bank erosion where the trim had gone into this bank, we had a hillside truck that was dumping a couple, 300 pounds of dirt in the creek every year. That evulsion was caused by the creek getting plugged up and slamming into the side of the hill by too much sediment in the creek that it couldn't push downstream. So it backed up and went into the hillside. Where'd the sediment come from? Roads. We went in and there and drained all those roads that were problematic and totally changed the dynamics of the water. We also did in creek work where we, we stabilized uh, Creek bank erosion, too. We did those two things, but the biggest dirt predator there was the roads. Okay. <clears throat> By diverting the road surface flow off the road before the flow reaches the stream system, the amount of sediment into the stream is greatly reduced. This reduction in sediment contributes to the stream's. Reduction in total maximum daily load. That's how they measure this. Okay, you can actually measure sediment overloading in the stream that can trigger 
undesirable geomorphic evolutions of the channel morphology, such as bank erosion, mid-channel bars, as well as covering up the stream channel bottom gravel, which is necessary for, for uh, fish spawning. Okay. Conclusion. It is a known fact that roads within our watersheds are the biggest impediment to proper water functioning conditions. Therefore, road water harvest is one of the best and most economical ways to restore proper functioning condition to your watersheds. If you don't believe my BS, read some of these right here. Okay. This top one is. Uh, Watershed analysis, or as I should have written that out because I never can remember what it says. An assessment by uh, Raj, how to chase set of Thank you. So, does that give you a big picture? I just that's a question. Yes or no? I mean, is this thing, I mean, what are we dealing with here? We're dealing with a big problem. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> the discipline of harvesting water roads uh, includes these disciplines and some basic knowledge and understanding. Geology. That okay. The geomorphology. That's the effect of, of change on Earth. It could be fluvial geomorphology, the effect of water. Or there's a soil type also. Hydrology, you need to kind of understand how water works. Ecology, that's vegetation. Okay. And the animals that use that territory. Okay. You've, got to, you've got to tune in to not only the road, but the holistic view of things. Because you, you're working with this, you're going to trigger things to work better, mostly on erosion and water uh, harvesting for vegetation. The other thing that we discovered yesterday, taking, who, who knows Kate Ziegler? The well lady, everybody knows Kate. Talking to Kate yesterday, and we both did presentations that we're having problems with wells. But by golly, if we keep water on the land for, we're going to help recharge some well systems. Might take some time. But here's what happens okay, to the road. Now, right in the rim, the road's bad. <laughs> so here's your road. Downhill. Sloping. <laughs> Here's a hill sloping. There's a lot coming off the hill. Now, collectively, what happens? This is called collateral flow when it comes off the upsail the outside of the road. This is called road surface collection. Okay. So now, where do we got? We got water going down the road. Listen very carefully. It's not getting off the road. Let's just say it comes all the way down the road. Hits a ditch or a gully. Goes down here, goes into the creek, goes a little further, goes into another creek. That leaves the ranch. You poke a hole in the bottom of your gas tank <laughs> on your pickup truck in the morning <laughs> and get in it and drive it. Just what you're doing there. It leaves the ranch once it's in the ditch and once it's in the gully. Once it's in the Canadian River, 
you've lost every opportunity to put that water to beneficial use because you're not willing to manage the water problem. The road washes away, you lose all the water, you beat up your equipment, etc. etc. You work, you keep working on the road because it keeps washing out. Now, if you do this right, you won't touch the road. If they're ever touching, take that road grader and sell it. <laughs> get a dozer. Huh? And get a dozer. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Probably be better off, actually. Uh, so, does that make a picture for you? Okay. Troy, I don't mean to put you on the spot. <laughs> I've had the pleasure to work at Cowboy with Troy and Brian and these guys, and I just, it's just great. You know, I've got to know Troy and Lori, and we've had a lot of fun, and I've watched Troy a lot. He's taught me a lot, so Lori has too. Or he's one of the best Callahans you'll ever work with. So Troy, based on this concept, is it smart or stupid to let water go down and leave the ramp? I know, just that's the only thing I can think to say. Uh, obviously stupid. Yeah, it's obviously stupid. Yeah. Okay. I'm not trying to put people on the spot. I'm trying to make a point. You know, but. I'm introducing some new ideas to a lot of you, and when we see a new idea, we go, oh, I don't know, you know that's going to take change, I don't know, that's going to change, oh, oh, oh. but I want to drive in some stuff, because what's, what's the two most important things in, in ranching to produce livestock? Two things, grant, two things, two most important things to, to grow a cow. Water and feed? Exactly. Now let's feed the cows, Rich. Go down the road. We'll put some rolling dips in here. This is this is it, guys. This is really simple. We're going to study some other stuff. But this is the foundation. Now, where's the water going? Tell me, Grant. Where's it going on the ranch? On the ranch. Is it better to keep it on the ranch, or send it down the building? On the ranch. Yeah. The more it goes to the Cimarron. The Cimarron goes to the Pecos. The Pecos goes to the Rio Grande. The Rio Grande runs into the ocean. Sir, not quite. Hmm? Did I miss? Water, water to the Canadian, to the Red, to the Mississippi. We're oh, it goes into the... We're in the Mississippi River. Okay, thank you. I didn't know if that was right or not. Thank you. <laughs> but anyways, it goes into the ocean. Now, you want to go to Louisiana, and uh, collect back some of your ranch out of the delta and haul it up there in the dump truck along with the water truck. And suck out a big old lot of water and bring it back up here. Yeah. So it goes, okay, wait a second. Uh, Mora, Cimarron. Canadian. Mora, Canadian. Oh, it's Canadian. Red? Red. And Mississippi. Mississippi. I should know that. I should know that. Probably the Navy Council. I made that mistake yesterday. See, I made that mistake yesterday. So, Grant. There's actually a website you can, it says drop right, uh, drop a raindrop, and you can pinpoint anywhere in the United States and it'll show you exactly the whole path that water drops. Well, now what do we got here, Grant? What do we produce? Feet, grass, clump of grass, right? We got this critter down here. I'm a really good artist. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if I get it right. Well, it's not right because it's not a backwards wall. No one, no one draws an arrow like you do. Oh, here, here, here. How about that? Uh -oh. It's an asterisk. Wow. <laughs> hey, I reckon I know that cat. What's your brain? It's an R or something, right? Backwards L with the bar underneath. Okay. Well, we could brand him on there. What's your brand? You put your brand on there. <laughs> Mike, what's your brand? You put your brand on that. Say. I don't know if I want my brand. <laughs> 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 
So this is a this is the Moore Canyon rock cruncher. He's a special breed. <laughs> he lives down there in the canyon. Okay, I think you get the point. All right. Any questions? This is a funny way I start this. Well, this as laminate is thrown to pick up for it. Okay. Here's where we screw up. Here's where Steve is screwed up. Here's where most of you will screw up if you don't pay attention. Okay. It's on your handout here. I just give you my notes so you can kind of follow along and then you can scribble on there. Oh, who brought a clinometer? Oh my goodness. Who's got is it on your phone or is it on your phone? Your hand. See, she knows what the heck's going on. And you use it, don't you? <laughs> oh see, okay, we're gonna get you. That's why she wanted to bring it, because she wants you to Okay, we'll get it we'll get you tuned up. The one on your phone, guys, is easier to use than the handheld. Really? Yeah. 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 Oh. And it's accurate. I worked with a bunch of guys at Pima County Road Department over in Arizona, and they turned me on to the phone one. Oh boy. We, and it's, it, we shot the hand one, and then we shot the phone one, and we came up with the same number the phone ones along. Is that on your phone? Wow. Is it, is it no. a clinometer on your phone? No, I got it. I got the. Yeah, yeah. show it to you on my own. Cool. Prepared. Is it an app that you can download? Yeah, it's an app. I don't oh. download it last night. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay, here's where you screw up. Not using the clonometer to verify road slope, drainage slope, and reverse grade on your rolling dip. Because I will guarantee you, especially when you get into marginal slopes, you're going to screw it up. And I will guarantee you, if you don't build the rolling dip right and check it, you will screw it up. And the water will go over the top of the rolling dip. Right, Jeremiah? That's right. How many of the rolling dips did I screw up at Fort Union before Jeremiah said, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think some of those were knocked down by the drug grader as well. Yeah, but you understand. Yeah, but I started them. They were five years old, but still. Jeremiah went out. We were redoing doing some maintenance on the road at Fort Union that I did five years ago. And Jeremiah was right. I think we probably had them built a little better. But he went up and he shot all of them. The existing ones and put some more in between because we hadn't put enough in. And he said, the problem with this road is we got drains in it, but they're going over the top. So we effective, you know, the drain's about half effective. So we uh, we collaborated and tightened up our tightened up our deal. Okay, here's where you screw up. If you don't have a, a clinometer, you better get one. Not reading the landscape well and missing opportunities. We'll talk about this. <coughs> opportunities to tie in landform, surface flow across the road, and especially missing small concentrated pant channel flows into the road, which includes, you don't have this on your notes, roads coming in, the roads coming into the road you're working on, cow trails coming in, and in this list, of not paying attention where you dump the water, you don't have a buffer zone. You're not getting it in a good grassy place, you stick it in some ditch, you stick it in some old road, but you just move the problem over. Okay. You want to spur buffer zone. Very shapely there. Got it. Okay. Oh, let's see. Not draining. Okay. Not draining the road at the top of the hill. And at a point in the road where the grade steepens, we'll just use this. Okay, lots of times here's the top of the hill, but this kind of grades out. It's still, it's still coming in, right? You know, it's still sloping in, and it almost looks flat, but it, this is why you need a chronometer. You shoot back on that road and go, my God, I got 2% coming down this road. Well, guess where the water's going to go? And as soon as it breaks this hill, what happens to water when it increases slope? Speeds up. What happens to what happens to road surface material? We can carry larger class. We forget the Kikatrinian right? So guys that moved down here, we did. Guys at Romeo Park, 
That's, a, that's one they've missed. I drove around by Vermeil Park and too far down the hill. Too far down the hill. But I got the machine. I got huh? You gotta get off the machine. Well that too. We'll cover that one too. That's one of the next ones. That's the next one. Are you reading ahead? <laughs> Designing and locating drains siding off the machine and not on foot. You cannot see proper grading location from the machine. And you will screw it up, and I have. Okay. Design on foot from the top of the hill down, because you can see slope and grade better. Okay, you start at the top of the hill and you walk down to do this work. You don't walk up. And you dump water off the road as you go down the hill. So you dump the water off, dump the water off, dump the water off. And you kind of got an idea of, you know, okay, I've broken this up, I've broken this up, I've broken this up. Okay. Yeah, you can't see off the machine. The other thing is, even if what I call fast track construction and design where I'm going down a road, I haven't staked it, I haven't marked anything. I'll go down, I'll start. Maybe I'll take 15, 20 minutes in the in, in. I've always driven the road first and kind of get an idea. I've driven the Turner's main road out. Couple times I kind of know what needs to be done now, but we need to get off the bus one. But um, I get off the machine, walk down the road, cite my stuff, figure out where maybe just put a rock in the road or something. I don't think a little pin fly or something, and then go back to work. Okay. Not getting enough material <clears throat> out of the drain to correctly build a good rolling dip cross drain. Okay, we just don't pull up enough material. Um, hmm. Kristen, is it better to have more material or less material to work with? You learned that one, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You get up there and you wall around and go, oh, I just, I can't, you know. Not like, it, it, you can't make a cake without all the mix. Uh, being in a hurry, slow down, do it right the first time. That's, that's nip my butt more time than you can have it. Okay. Uh, some of the fine work you witness on the road coming in, I was in a hurry. I was going to touch up things. And I just was that you? <laughs> hey, I did that, fix the mud hole. Was that you? <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't, I don't mind just, you know. I've already had my ass chewing my neighbors, my Turner brothers. You guys can get on me, but, you know, there was an example. You know, we had a church brothers and I had a five o'clock meeting. We dumped the dozer out there so they mainly fill that big mud hole at the bottom, bottom of the same bottom of the uh, uh, hill. You know, so anyways, not taking the time and having enough material to build the correct rolling dip drain that is not a hump and a bump because it's not long enough. Making sure, making sure you build your structure long enough to accommodate the vehicles that use it, okay? So some roads you'll put in a certain kind of drain and others you're gonna put in another kind of drain. Mm -hmm. I mean, same drain, but it's gonna be bigger, you know, places where, like the main road out here, we gotta accommodate the mm -hmm. pot belly semi. You can't do this and drag the bottom of the, mm -hmm. you know, you can't go over to 45 miles an hour that you can drive on this road, okay? But on horse trailer and stuff, you've got to have a longer, nicer, you know, rollout. You know? Still, you got to have it high enough that it kicks water off. So you got to think about if it's some old funky road going to the windmill and all you're driving down a mostly pickup truck, you still want something that's comfortable to drive over. But it doesn't have to be 60 feet long like you do for a semi. You know? So. Not checking to make sure you have a reverse grade on the rollout. So water will not overtop the rollout. We kind of talked about that. But you need a tool and an instrument to do that. Leaving <coughs> and or not removing burn 
or not installing brakes in the existing road. Just leaving bumps and humps. We like to see stuff. Here's the reason, and we'll demonstrate in the field. You dig this, you dig this drain out to get your material. Well, it, it has vertical sides on it. We lay those vertical slides back. That's the last two passes we make, okay, to push that dirt out. You know why? What grows on a vertical surface? Nada. Nada. So you lay it back. What, what grows on a wind row of dirt? Weeds. If they're lucky. <laughs> wind rows of dirt are high and dry. So we like do nice clean work and knock all that stuff down and track roll it. You know, track rolling has, and there's been papers written on this, actually by the Forest Service, wrote one. What do you leave when you, you leave those, the grousers, that's your bar on your track, leaves those horizontal tracks in there. What do you think falls in there? Seeds. Water. 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 Track rolling really helps revegetation. Okay, you can, and also if you want to seed, we've done this where we had, where we had uh, lost some of our, um, in, in this particular, we lost our cool season grasses on this place, and so I said, look, you know, we're going to put in three hundred rows of this. Because, you know, I said, let's track roll it, but in our Cool season black and grasses. We came back with a chain harrow and ran over it. Everybody know where the chain harrow is? Nobody? Okay. Ran over it. And, uh, oh, Captain was that? Ran over We had 100% germination. Mm. We were kind of lucky, but we had 100% germination. It made cool good so we made these little nurseries, basically. Those get seed and they start to spread now. Doing, you know, as long as they stayed with their proper management. So everything we do, not only harvest the water, all our dirt work has to be left in a restorative manner that we can, uh, that will benefit uh, revegetation. Okay. Otherwise, you're just out there screwing stuff up. <laughs> if you screw this up, put too many drains in. Like, even at the grocery store, the door opens for you. <laughs> Morning, everyone. Morning. Morning. Are you Jake? No, you are. He's, he's um, Louis. <laughs> Louis. Yeah. What's your last name, Louis? Romero. Huh? Romero. Are you the local rep for out here? Uh, you have two that are coming, and I think they left a little later. So what do you speak. do, Louis? I'm the equipment trainer. Oh shit. Sure. Oh yay! Nobody knows how to run this dozer out. Here. Oh, what's wrong with you guys? I don't know. A whole bunch of dozers. <laughs> about that. Okay. Oh, I forgot that uh, one of our sponsors is. Wagner equipment. They help with some of the expenses of getting. I forgot that. Okay. Not installing enough drains. We're moving two things. Hey, when we drain the road, what two elements are we working with? Water and dirt. Yeah, water and dirt. I like that dirt. It's also known as <laughs> yeah, you know, and I'm just, I'm just, the terminology if we're dealing with water would be set up, and that's what we call it. So, you know, we're just going to do terms, don't we? Okay, he's okay. So, a couple things can happen if you don't put enough drains in. The steeper the road, the more the drains. Why? Yeah, but what does steepness have to do with slow down? Hmm? Makes the water yeah, what does grade have to do with speed and force? The speed of the water. 
Okay. It's on the next page if you're like, let me just jump to that. It's on page eight of your book. I flipped your book. Bill's you like book open to page eight. Now we're going to study physics. <coughs> And since this is a physical law, okay, this isn't my opinion, guys. All right, you're dealing with physics. Okay, this is a universal law. Okay, this is not something Steve and Bill invented. Okay, basically, what that chart says when, when the when you increase the slope, at some point you double the velocity. Velocity times two equals you you move four times as much sediment, eight times the particle size. So, if we're moving a rock at two percent, let's say we're moving a rock at two percent. <coughs> Of this size, two or three percent, and we double that, and we're moving rocks like this. And we'll see this on the road. Yeah. So, why do we increase the drains when we increase the slope? Reduce speed. And Excuse me. Reduce speed and volume. Exactly. Right. The long because it's going to increase. You can't control that. Okay. That water's going to get to running fast, so you've got to break it up more. If you're flatter, you're not running so fast, okay, and you have your drains further apart. Okay, so we're moving water. You put enough drains in, you only move a small amount of water in each drain and, and a small amount of sediment. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, who was with us yesterday? You, this, we looked at some stuff yesterday. Perfect example. Somebody had put a drain in at a bottom of about, you know, a mile road. <laughs> what happened to that drain? <clears throat> it filled up with sediment because <clears throat> they didn't di disperse their sediment along with their water. If you're Christian and you had that happen, <laughs> yeah. So what did you do? You backed up the road the next time and put another drain. In. Yeah. Have you ha have you had the other thing that you can't happen? If you don't put enough drain, you start stuffing too much water in the, in one drain and you cut a ditch out there. You know so. You know, it's, it's all in the book right there. But that's, that's, that's a good study. So we don't put it in the Okay, we pretty much went over this next deal about um, uh, roads and uh, you know, the consequences of sediment. As it's, it occurs, uh, you know, un, un, unmanaged roads create uh, heavy sediment loads, which create extended problems in river geomorphology function, impaired fishery habitat, plugged up irrigation systems, and water treatment systems. Poorly managed road drains can be easily corrected and has many benefits. so far? I got one. Yes, sir. What is the primary issue? The roads that you guys are building, <laughs> mm -hmm. how they're draining, and I take it, how the crown shoulders. And right. All. And the big problem here is we got water running down the road and just blowing the road out. So right. put rolling dips. The idea is to put the rolling dips in, you know, <clears throat> put a hump in the road, grow it, take it off. And we call that water harvesting. Right. Multi benefits for not only the road, but the ranch, because once we kick that water off, really, it goes back on the landscape to grow grass rather than going down the road, down the gully, and gone. So we're trying to keep water the on the land by draining the roads correctly. That's, that's, 
And I noticed you have rocks way out on the side and have vegetation, and then the road's like a one lane road. Yeah. So are you guys venturing out there to actually build up your road out there if we could have Only if you have to. Only if you have to. Yeah. Because you want to keep that vegetation. Yeah. 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 The other thing is, that's the other. Here's a good point. The more vegetation you have up against your road, the more A, that you got to feed a cow or water. <coughs> the other thing is, that vegetation holds stuff together. Unless you've got to reach way out there for some reason, don't be doing it. I mean, you see these guys cut the back slope and they, you know, the, the narrower the road, the less water we have to manage. And the road goes from 12%, I mean, from 12 feet to 10 feet, which significantly reduced the amount of water that runs down the road. Let's talk about water running down the road. Let's go to that right now. Some of you know this equation. Who can regurgitate this equation for me? <laughs> One inch of rainfall is equal to 0.6 inches of precipitation per square foot. Per square foot. This is a square foot. It's five feet in square foot. Impermeable surface, one inch of rain hits that. It equals this much water. What's the square footage of your roof, Carl? Plus or minus? Um, 30 by 40. 1,200 square feet. Six times twelve, five hundred gallons. Right? Wait. Seven hundred and twenty. Seven twenty. Seven twenty. Yeah. So you take one year and try and get seven hundred gallons off this roof. So think about your roofs at the ranch. Pass it around. I want you, everybody to take a look at this. <clears throat> Visualize the square foot. Now, how many square foot of model road? 52,000 square feet. Plus or minus. Okay, let's look at some numbers. On your bottom of this page right here is all written out for you. But it'll make some sense. We'll take a break here soon. <laughs> I got rid of that old cow for it. <laughs> oh, I need to move it over. Okay, using the equation of one inch of rain on one square foot produces 0.6 gallons. Okay, I have a 12 foot wide road, one mile long, will collect 12 times 52, 63,000 square feet times 0.6. This is just hitting the road, guys. This is not what's coming off the slope. Yeah. <laughs> 38,000 gallons of water. Okay, I used this example the other day. Mm -hmm. Tandem axle water truck. Holds 5,000 gallons. I've already seen a tandem axle water truck. That's a 5,000 gallon truck. That's eight loads in that truck. All right, if you take the you guys got a water truck? No. But if you took a water truck out here on a mile road and runs quickly down, up and down the road and dumped eight loads on it. Okay, and have water all over the place. Okay, so 
38,000 gallons of water. We, uh, well, actually that, oh, a typo. We derate, not delate. Derate this amount by, it's always a nice place to catch your typos. Why, why does it always happen here? You know, by 25% for infiltration, evaporation, et cetera, et cetera, based on soil type, everything else. Now we have 28,000 gallons of water running down one mile of road. Please note that that's just on the road. Okay. If, for sake of argument, what we've done is we've used, let's just multiply that based on, you can calculate this based on what the watershed above your road looks like in the vegetation code. For sake of explanation, let's take collateral flow and, and multiply that number by five. Okay, now we have 142,000 gallons going down a mile of road. Okay, this equals 1.28 acre feet of water over three miles. How many gallons in a paper foot? 335, something, blah, blah, something like that. 3,000 <coughs> gallons. Paper foot is an acre covered with one foot of water. What's that worth? Does anybody, do you know what acre foot costs you down at Laredo if you bought water? If you bought an acre foot? Uh, if you, you, a farmer can rent it for about $80 an acre foot out of the river that you guys send down to us. But what if you... <laughs> <laughs> I ain't flushing my toilet. That's right. <laughs> That's our no, but water. if you went out and bought it. I know in the Pewaukee Valley, there's arguments of selling water or not selling water. They're getting $20, 20 to $30,000 an acre foot. Truly. I, I sell it to oil company for about 50 cents a barrel. That's 42 gallons. So divided 325 by 42. Yeah, this is you know, worth something. Okay. Is it worth keeping on your ranch? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, how many acre feet do you have allocated to your ranch between wells and surface water? You don't know, obviously. But yeah, you don't understand what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. If you had to go buy more, yeah. but if you manage the water better, you got more. Okay. And so, this all causes a problem. Okay. The average ranch has, how many miles of road you got? Over 100. Yeah. So. See, uh, for me, what did you say, 200? 250 miles? 200. For Mayo Park, 1,000 miles? Mm. Half a million acres. Yeah. Mike, do you know how many miles of road you got? Probably 60 miles. Yeah. Like and what, 10, 12,000 acres? What do you got? 7,200. 7,200? Okay, so you can do a road density calculation on that, but you know, it starts adding up. I put in here, this sounds about right from my experience, the average ranch has 150 miles of road on it, equals 64 acre feet of water per inch of rain, per inch of rain, or 21 million gallons per inch of rain. Now, you get 16 inches of rain, Troy. Not all of that runs water. But let's just say half of it ran water. Now, how many millions of gallons do we have to manage? Okay, this is this is a lot of. You know, when you start looking at these numbers, it's significant. I can't remember the report that I gave to the CS Ranch when we got done. That we ran this calculation on it. Okay, after we after three years of doing all their ranch roads. Okay. And it was a pile of acre feet. Okay. So basically, if you consider your roads a tank, hmm? and how to use the water out of that tank to redirect the Or water. a collection system, yeah. yeah a collection yeah. system. A tank is would store. Okay, I used the wrong word. But yeah. basically, well, no, but I mean conceptual. I'm not, it's semantics, but a tank gives us a picture of something. But yeah, but it's a collection area. Right. It's like your roof. Mm -hmm. We know water runs off the roof. Right. And we know if we put a gutter up there, we can harvest a whole bunch of it. You know, I'll run that in there. You know, so. Um,
So basically, yeah, the next thing is, you know, you got millions of gallons of water hitting your ranch. Is it worth managing? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Let's take a 10-minute break.